The ultimate unknown, besides space travel, is understanding the human brain. It is the most complex organ in the human body and probably the most complex system on Earth. There are 100 billion neurons in each of our brains, which is equivalent to the number of stars in the Milky Way. And there are 500 trillion connections in a single human brain. It's really the great unknown. I, as a neuroscientist, want to treat neurodegenerative diseases. Hi, I'm Ryan Watts. I graduated from the University of Utah in 2000 in biology, and I'm currently Director of Neuroscience at Genentech in San Francisco. Here at Genentech, Dr. Ryan Watts works to develop new therapeutics for Alzheimer's disease. Nobody calls him Dr. Watts. <laughs> One of the critical issues here is delivering the therapeutic to the brain, which requires conjugation of this uh, inhibitor to a antibody against transferrin receptor, which usually shuttles iron into the brain. The antibody is then able to use this transferrin receptor shuttle to gain access to the brain and inhibit its target. That's what I do. How was that? Is that caught? <laughs> yeah, I think I dreamt of playing in the NFL, but I realized I just didn't have the skills of Steve Smith, you know, so. So I had to do something else, and I was lucky to have a chemistry teacher in high school who was amazing and uh, really got me interested in chemistry. But it was really at the U where I, where I put that chemistry to life in biology and biochemistry. One of the things I'm most grateful for is that my parents funded my education at the University of Utah State School. Um, but I realized as I went you know, to the U is that they're really, really smart people there. And I actually really realized this when I went to Stanford. And as a teaching assistant for the undergraduate at Stanford, I, the, really the best students at Stanford and the best students at the University of Utah are indistinguishable. But I still think I could play in the NFL. One of the things about him, he's enormously competitive. He's one of the most competitive people I know. <laughs> Getting into a competition with Ryan is definitely not the best idea. He definitely loves competition. You will find hardly another person who's as competitive, but it's competitive in the very best sense of, of competition. So he works hard on his own skills. He drives his people to bring out the best in themselves. He's fair. Um, he's, he's transparent and he really wants to win and when, and when we win, we share the success together and, uh, and that's what really, what really sets them apart. One of my favorite things that we do in the neuroscience department is what we call Inside of the Month and it's a competition between all the research associates and the postdocs to who made the best discovery uh, that month. They get four minutes to present two slides and the winners are voted on by the entire department. And it's really a great time, but it also motivates people to do, I think, exciting and relevant work. This is a MRI image, I believe, of um, Brian wife Jenny's um, grandfather who had Alzheimer's disease. And so it's something also very motivating for us to kind of remember. He had it framed for the Inside of the Month Award. I'm really grateful that Ryan has dedicated his life to working on a cure for Alzheimer's disease because it was really devastating for us to watch my grandfather um, be diagnosed with that and not have him know who we were. I don't see any separation from what I do at work and what's going on at, at home especially you know, seeing my wife's family, in particular Jenny's you know, grandfather develop Alzheimer's disease and decline over a five-year period. And what it really does is it just strips you of, of who you are. I mean, you, it starts with the short-term memories, but then from there it goes to the you know, longer-term memories until you basically forget everyone in reverse order of how you met them. That's the most bizarre thing, actually. So, like, they forgot Abby. He forgot Abby's name first, and then he f they f then he forgot Tanner, and then he forgot who I was, and then eventually Jenny still sort of remembered what who his daughter was, and eventually his daughter. I mean, th it's sort of this reverse order of memory loss. Do you know that there was also a woman who solved the three-dimensional structure of DNA, even though Francis Crick and James Watson take credit for it? Nope. <laughs>
DNA is what underlies your hair color, your eye color, and your intelligence. What do you think of that? That's fascinating. <laughs> yes, very nerdy. My dad is not a nerd. What he works on is very important. He's working on Alzheimer's disease and it's definitely helping people and I know that what he's doing is making a difference. He's more of a bro than a dad sometimes just because we're always together and we're always uh, sharing cool experiences and especially when we're on the ski hill or playing ping pong, he doesn't necessarily feel like my dad. He's more of like a best friend. So who usually wins? My dad usually wins, yeah. but sometimes my brother does. My dream of being a scientist was almost thwarted by the ski instruction course where I was going to become a ski instructor and, and uh, but I realized that I probably could make more of myself. Right Jen? So my last year at the university we were applying for graduate schools and you know receiving letters to go visit various um, graduate programs. And I was packing up our suitcases and uh, I had Tanner with me who was about four or five months old at the time and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to live away from Utah, away from my family? We obviously loved Utah. We had a young child. Tanner was basically six months old at the time. And, and one of the, I asked Jenny to travel with me, and we were going to the East Coast to, to Princeton. And she looks at me and says, you better make something of yourself. And I turned to Ryan, and I said to him, is all I can say, Ryan, is you better make something of yourself if you know, you're going to take me away from Utah and take me away from my family, and I've never lived it down. Ryan is an amazing uh, leader. A simple way to put it, he cares about the work you do, and he cares about your lifestyle and general um, content of your life. He's an inspiring leader. His uh, enthusiasm for science is contagious, and I think um, he really challenges everybody to think bigger and go beyond what they think they can do. He really goes out of his way to make sure that every single person who works in the lab is appreciated and understands, and, and he makes them understand that what they're doing really matters. Someone in my family had a really huge medical emergency, and I had to fly back to India. And I was worried about missing work, and when I called him from India, he just said two sentences, Shalu, forget about work, family is really important. It shows a side of him that most people might not get to see, and I will never forget Ryan and his compassion for that reason. When I received the phone call that I was going to receive this award, I was pretty convinced that they had made a mistake. There's a lot of other people that have done a lot better, you know, more important things than me. But at the same time, I've been really lucky to do something that I love, which was basically you know, initiated with my experience at the University of Utah. And for that, I'm very grateful and also very, you know, honored to receive this award. Go Utes!